I'm Dr. Anurani Kapota and I was program coordinator for the Masters in Child and Adolescent Mental Health at the Institute of Psychiatry. This project was something that I developed to help students on the course who are all international. The idea was that it would help them with their language skills as well as their orientation to families and clinical work in the UK. The second objective was that in the future it may also form the basis of material for distance learning. We had four videos using actors. I'm Richard, this is Omar. Hi. Hello. Good to meet you. All right. Uh, would you like to come in and take a seat? Yeah. Great. Ryan. Ryan. Is Ryan, that, don't is that touch a game that. boy? Ryan, don't touch that. You don't know how to behave in front of people. Come on, sit down. Right, would you like so to take he a seat? just doesn't know how to behave. Mm. Sit That's down. Okay. Which helped uh, people with language and also accents. So we had actors who we asked them to speak with a South London accent. And then we had the animations and we tried very hard to make it multicultural. Uh, I have to say all the cases were based on real life um, clinical patients. The first one was Jasmine who uh, had a self-harm episode and was depressed but came from a family where really she had no family support. So the story illustrates interviewing a girl alone and also managing a girl alone once she is old enough to make her own decisions because that is something that is a feature of work with adolescents. It also illustrates the issues that come with depression. Another one that's quite different in a way is Peter though again he has no family support but he has foster parents. He's in care, he's delinquent, he has a history of substance abuse and that highlights the issues of young people looked after and broken attachment. With all the cases, the fact that um, they can read the dialogue helps students with their language. What I would do was demonstrate one of them in the classroom setting as part of teach, initial teaching on initial assessment of a child and then ask the students to use them themselves at home and that's what they did. And occasionally we would have a session where they would bring questions that arose from looking at the stories. So we would have some questions brought back from, but they would access the stories at home. We have been collecting feedback from the students from the time they began using these vignettes, which is now about four years. And the feedback has been positive. They have found that it helps them develop clinical skills. This is particularly important now since we get quite a few students from the European Union who don't have a lot of clinical experience prior to coming here. Other students have found it helpful. They've said they've learned from them, not only the features of the particular problem, but also how to interview and how to write up a case and how to formulate, which was part of the package. So the feedback has been positive and also from a Japanese group who got permission to use those. Well, the first challenge obviously is funding. And I was lucky to get grants from Kings and then make the funding fit what one wants to do. The second challenge initially was meeting people who had the technical skill. Um, but then once we got on to the ITS and then which later became TEL, 
that became less of an issue. Uh, doing the videos was a challenge because when hiring actors, I initially thought I shouldn't say what ethnicity they ought to be. But then I got into a mess because the first actress said she'll bring her son and she brought her son who was the son of her partner. So he was in fact quite clearly black British. So we had to change the script very fast. Then for the second one she said, well I could bring my daughter and she was very good in what she was doing. So I said, oh, all right. And then the daughter turned up and the daughter was obviously um, dual heritage because her father had been black British. So we had to change the script again. But also we had to be then careful because people would then think that all the problem children were black British. So by then I had to specify to the agency that the next two had to be white British. So that was one problem that arose. Uh, but otherwise that was fine. With the animations we had much less difficulty. I was able to work with the developer and decide what people would look like and it worked very well. I think one issue that I had at the beginning was I had planned to try and do a system where they were branching from an original story. So you go one way or you go another way. And at the time we began this project, that technology was not uh, available within the institute, certainly. I think if I'm doing it again, it would be nice to have that form of branching because that makes it even more real. Uh, but, and also it's useful to think of the best cases that can be illustrated in the animation. And also one has to be ready to write the dialogue, write the story. It's not a question of just writing out a case history as one would do. Well, I had the two students who wrote a couple of the scripts. Most of the other scripts were written by me, though uh, some colleagues contributed one or two of the original cases. And I had a colleague who checked out, say, for instance, the eating disorder one to make sure that it was absolutely realistic in terms of the verbal content. And of, I did enjoy working with the animator because uh, she got, I think, quite involved with the cases and sometimes wanted to know what happened to the cases as well. That is a very positive part of the project. I think the important thing is to think of interactivity and how best to develop that for clinical teaching because not to use it now that we have the opportunities would we'll be missing out on a very important part of potential learning.